Some people are really into secret codes or puzzles. I've never been one of them, but making our last video about the Arecibo message, I found a puzzle I really wanted to try and solve. In 1974, a message for an extraterrestrial civilization was beamed out from the Arecibo radio telescope in Puerto Rico, the largest radio telescope in the world. Even though I knew the basics of what information was there, I didn't understand how to read it. And after a few hours of struggling to figure it out, we decided to get together a group of people from a variety of disciplines. Astronomy. My name is Aiden. I'm a graduate student in astronomy and I study exoplanets. Planetary science. I'm Melissa and I just graduated with degrees in astronomy and geology. Computer science. My name is Alexander and I'm a computer scientist. And biochemistry. My name is Elias and I'm a molecular and cellular biologist. We wanted to see if they could figure it out. Follow along with us and see if you can beat them to the punch. In 1974, the largest telescope in the world was Arecibo Observatory, which is a radio telescope in Puerto Rico. To show off the incredible powers of this new telescope, which had been made like 10 years earlier, astronomers wanted to send a message to the stars. So imagine you have to send a message to aliens. How would you go about doing it? What would you send? What would your thought processes be? What would you do? The, the most important thing is first to send a message that is clearly from life. You know, you want to send a message that looks like it could be from a star. I think one thing I would do is continuously broadcast it. It's sort of don't want it to appear for like 10 seconds and then, you know, that's oh, we missed it. I would say it has to be a systematic message then, yeah. something that's not just going to get picked up as background and then something that actually has some theme that could be represented as not just random chaos from the cosmos. So I'm thinking like, I'm thinking like uh, the movie Contact, right? That signal just kept going and going and going and anybody who's listening could pick it up wherever they wanted to and eventually it would repeat on itself and then yeah. now you have the, the primer as they called it in the movie. So you have the general idea of what you want to send, but what information would you want to try and get across other than just, oh, it's, we want some sort of systematic message? Location. Where, where, we, where we think we are with respect to everything else, so maybe it can be traced back without having to use uh, triangulation, right, or the methods that we have for saying it's coming from that area of the sky, uh, but except I can't think of any possible way to do that because I'm not an astronomer. You guys are astronomers. I think more, I don't know if I want to say uh, this is where we are in the yeah, cosmos. You know, they're hostile. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't we be excited, though, to meet life of any kind, even if they are hostile? Wow, they do exist. That's the end. From a biological perspective, you move into new territory because you either need their resources, you want to eat them, um, or maybe, maybe kindness, but that seems pretty rare. Well, I, I s sort of agree with location. I mean, maybe you, you might say, yo, we, we don't want to say exactly where we are. I think it's pretty difficult to say exactly where we are just in a message anyways because you sort of have to create a star map and have that map be interpreted and it's probably not going to be very straightforward. I still think location would be difficult to include just because we use different coordinate systems than anywhere else. I'm not exactly sure what, but just make it seem like we're friendly life. <laughs> I don't know how you would do that. So if they did end up finding us, which they probably would, if they located where the signal was coming from, they wouldn't kill us. <laughs> so... Like we could set a song. <laughs> Gangbang style. Yeah. <laughs> In this message, they would contain information about humanity in case it ever got picked up by anyone. Here is that message. We want you to decode it. So here is all of the information that we have about the message. Oh. So we are kind of imagining that we've received this message from you know, this source, and you have to figure out what it means. Okay, so the first thing is, where would you start? Are you guys old enough to remember dial-up internet? Where I would mean, I start? I'd probably okay. look through and find a pattern, I guess, since we had even mentioned some sort of pattern. I know the 10 bits per second is really slow, and looking at this sheet with all the, the ones and zeros, um, you usually have to have a terminating character on strings in, when you're computing, right? You need to know where a string starts and ends and where the next string of bits starts, and there's no such thing on here. It doesn't look like it anyway. Nothing jumps out. So this is a continuous signal then? It just looks like it starts and ends. This could be one gigantic word or nothing. It's how many bits? 1679. Of course it's an odd number. So yeah, it just goes on for ages. What year was this again? 1974. Can I, can I use my phone? There's no way to know where you would want to break this up so that it actually looks like something. 
Right. Unless there's a control signal. I don't see any but, kind of... I mean, you got the shifting signal. It's going from, like, one to another and then back down. Yeah. First thing you could do is just, like, plot that out and see, see if some interesting like. thing comes. Okay. And then, you know, if that didn't look like anything interesting, you could try to... So, I mean, we've got... Break it into pieces, reshape it, I don't know. So we're going to give you a brief hint. Uh, the number that matters on the information sheet is the number of bits in the signal. Okay, so there's it's divisible by a number. Which number? Well, which I number? don't know. I'm going to share with the <laughs> class. That's what I'm doing. I'm just going one by one. I know. I thought there was a function on here to do the prime factor. All right, you know what? Factors of... I'm going to Google this because it's not, it's not cheating. 1, 23, 73. We have 23 and letters in... No, we don't. <laughs> <laughs> Well, hold on. <laughs> How many letters in Greek alphabet? So we have um, sixteen, seventy-nine, zeros and ones. Okay. So the the you know the factors are twenty-three and seventy-three. Okay. So we can create a rectangle, twenty-three on one side, seventy-three on the other, and then we'll have sixteen hundred seventy-nine spaces in okay. that rectangle, and then we can put either a white spot or a black spot for each of those places. Okay. I guess we better get started with the drawing. So we already <laughs> printed out we printed out a 23 by 73 grid of the numbers. Okay. Here, Here you go. This was going to take forever. This is if you do it either way. If you say 23 makes a row or 23 right. makes a... Hmm. Maybe it's but a scantron to a biology test. This one has some things in there that I recognize. Like this looks like term. a person. Yeah, it's... Really? Um, yeah, this has much more structure it's than not that. random. Also, Versus if you look at this from far away, it might look like it spells out live. No, maybe Let's not. see. I mean, I cross like your life. eyes. Does it look like anything? <laughs> so since you've decided on the message you want to go with, we have a much larger version for you to work from. That's yeah. Josh. <laughs> so just a couple brief things about this. It is important to remember this is where the message began going down, and then that extra row at the bottom that's not really there. It ended with the bottom so row. Actually, the message. top right, you think would, it, would have a key. Yeah. So one, two. Three blocks here. So this might be a key, and then you go through and recognize any. Hmm? No. Well, um. so this symbol would be the same as this one. Do you yeah, have a three? Have... This would be this one. Okay. Where's the single mm. dot? Okay, so yeah, we single are. Single dots. Oh, there no, is not there a isn't single a single dot. dot. Or does that mean zero? Well, does this? But Ooh. this single dot, if we assume that this is repeating, then this single dot is part of this whole shape, right? I would assume so. But this I would is, well, but there's this is no one good. that has this and this, and then yeah. these two in the front. I don't know what. There's not one that are. just has two. So there's one that has two, but there's not one that just has one. That's right. Why did we skip this, by the is way? One, is maybe uh, one just zero? That or? That's what I, yeah. Oh, that's oh that's you're right. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that's that all makes, you would need, right? Is zero through nine, of course. Well. I am ashamed of myself. I'm a computer scientist, and I started counting at one. Are you sure you guys picked the right person? Uh, hey guys, you've already brought this up, but just to let you know, these are the numbers one through ten. That is okay. right. Is. If you're going to broadcast out a broadcast out a message, everything you put on the message would be important. You wouldn't put a character that's not meaningful in some way. So everything on here has to mean something, even if it designates like a space or some kind of spatial separation. I mean, okay. Now that we know these are one through ten, this is obviously one. Okay, this is. Three, four, five, six. This is six. Okay. We Eight. move down the line. Seven. Uh, one, two, three, four. Yeah. So seven. And then but God then only knows. It breaks down. Yeah. By the way, if these, if that is how you're supposed to count them, it's like if it's obviously one, then you only go up. You go up four, but if it's two, then you go up three. See, and I don't it's think that's the same obvious. reason. No, I don't think that's obvious. But uh -huh. it's the same reason that for decades and decades. Mac hardware was incompatible with PC hardware. It's because they had different ending in this and they interpreted numbers slightly differently. You guys are basically getting the numbers right, so we're just gonna tell you what you got because you pretty much already got it. There is a baseline here okay. and everything above them counts, it doubles. And so this is one, then two, yeah. and then four. So this one counts. And so the way you count this one is there's no one, then it's two, no four, but this is not counted, and then eight, so two, and eight, but this is the extra space, not this one. Oh. And that is how you count numbers, and it just keeps going on like that. So, so you never count this space on any of them? 
No, this is this tells you where to start a number. Mm. It's just a baseline. It's at zero. If you, uh, or think about it as zero. Yeah. Yeah. Which zero, is zero, one, zero, two, zero, three, zero, yes. four, like that. Which okay. is why you but have this right here that's just zero. Okay. And then the number never you never use this line again. It is just the zero line. So it's basically just like this character here in this line, you just basically get rid of that. But otherwise the same counting you were using works. Each block can count up to uh, 32 then. Which yeah. is, I mean, pointless because this is the one through 10, but that's how it is, yeah. So this is the baseline. So two to the zero is one. Yeah. We don't have any two to the zero, so we don't have any ones, but then we have two to the one, which is two. Now we have a two to the one plus a two to the two. two sorry, two to the zero plus two to the one. So yeah. now we're ending up mm -hmm. with, with three. One <laughs> plus two. Yeah. yeah. Boy. So we were trying to figure out this has too many lines. Mm -hmm. This has five lines total. So can we just get rid of that bottom line like we were thinking? <laughs> Best. If we just use that counting system and assume that was a zero line, then we have uh, one. Two, four, eight. Well, let's do this. One, two, four, eight, sixteen, thirty-two. We've already broken the system from up here, right? Right. That, that we have uh, sixty-four, one twenty-eight, two fifty-six. That's all I know. What? Okay, yeah. so, I see what so this has gone out. It's going to be a huge. You guys, number. you guys ran into one of the big issues with this message. Mm -hmm. They don't always count numbers the same way, and so you ran into the issue where there are four above. If they have room, just keep counting up. You don't have to imagine that it stops after four and always resets them. They might just keep uh, going up a line. Sometimes they'll go back. So you don't have really to imagine high. that it's only four high. It is. <laughs> this is one of the big problems with this message. So knowing that, okay. continue. Mm -hmm. So... Any, any guesses, any thoughts? Okay. So before you get too far on this, all of these numbers represent individual things. It's not, you don't need to combine them for some math problem, there's no anything. They all represent something and you need to figure out what that is. Can I ask you, are there any errors? No. There I mean, are no errors. Okay. No mistakes. I was gonna say, I can't imagine that. I mean, aside from the entire message itself. We're gonna move this along. Okay. Here is your next hint. Oh, God dang it. Oh, uh, okay. Come on. okay. Periodic table. Okay, hydrogen. Carbon. Nitrogen, oxygen. Uh, and then 15 is where? Phosphorus. Phosphorus. Uh, know this stuff. Okay, so Chemistry. DNA. I was I not going to get. Okay, hydrogen, Kay. carbon. What is it? Nitrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, right? Oh, okay, so These, it's, it's going to be DNA then. This is DNA. Yeah. Oh. So, because those are all the um, oh, elements you need to make DNA. Life. Those, yeah. yeah, those are the elements in DNA. Okay. Good job. Uh, that that okay. I know it was hard until we <laughs> gave you the periodic table, but you can now continue trying to decipher the message. Okay. So the people, the species who made it, can't even figure it out. So now we need to, we need to move on because okay. I have those. It's been like an hour. Oh, you got right. those. Yeah. She's got the numbers. All right. Cool. What, what are they? Up? Does that have any kind of meaning? <laughs> Ooh, phone numbers. Uh, <laughs> um. So this is hard and we're just gonna have to sort of give you this one. You've talked around a lot of it and gotten really close on some parts of it, but they once again... Up? I'm sorry, I just added this up and you get... No. A pattern. no like a <laughs> but they're both still... They again sort of change how they're doing everything with you. Okay. <sighs> they are still counting numbers, but the reason they put this as a number of blocks across, you'll notice all of these are the same length. And so this first line is hydrogen. And so this first line is also hydrogen. So what's the number? How it's many one, hydrogen two, atoms? So it's seven hydrogen. Then the number of, and continue going. And so this one, that's got the four and the one, this is the line that represents oh, oxygen. So, so there's eight oxygens key, pretty and much. one. Yes, right. that is basically a key to the next section. And so oh, knowing oh, that, geez. try and figure out what all of this represents. Jeez, okay. <laughs> all right. Seven hydrogens. Okay. And then oxygen. And then one oxygen and no whatever the last thing was. So and seven hydrogen. No phosphorus. Is that sugar? Uh, Five. Um, like, carbon, know, hydrogen, oxygen, carbohydrates, probably. So what is that? Seven hydrogens. So it's H seven. Yeah. C five. And then uh, O one. O. Oh. Does that leap off the page towards anyone? H seven. Um, C five. That's five. 
I'm guessing it's it's a sugar. It's a it's a carbohydrate of some sort. I'm sure. Um, but well, we maybe, do know that humanity has a problem with bread and carbs. Maybe so put, maybe putting like all these healthy. different ones together, <laughs> if we if we write whatever the other ones Benzar. are, maybe yeah. we can put them together. Yeah. We've got hydrogens, carbons, oxygens all together, and we have four of them. Um, I'm going to guess that this is DNA then. So we're talking about A's, T's, G's, and C's at this point for this next line. You were totally right. Okay. A, T, C, G. And then these are deoxyribose and then phosphate. Ah. So these are the sugars and bases in DNA. Mm. So okay. you, you, you basically got all of that oh just because you don't actually know the chemical formulas for all of these. We're just going to give it to you. But this is a really confusing part of the message. So good job finally getting that. And then move on. All right, well, then it's, it's visually obvious to me. Now that we know this is DNA, this is obviously DNA. The double helix. It has to be. Oh, the double helix. Yeah. I could see what? that. Well, yeah, so if they're actually talking about it being that you've got um, the deoxyribose sugars bases and you're actually making the structure of DNA, then I could totally see this being the double helix structure yeah. of our DNA. Except yeah. does, does is there like a, a, co a, a pole in the middle? <laughs> the DNA? No, because it's like... No. Never tried to draw that before. I'm not going to try now. Maybe they just thought too much empty space. Let's add something. So Great. So what does that mean then? It might mean something about. Oh, you're sorry. Just that is not a part of the structure of DNA. That is something different. Figure okay. it out. Oh. Yeah. Obviously, <laughs> it's going to be something different. Are you kidding? Well, if you basically just Wait. say that this is DNA in phosphorus and you have a DNA structure, uh, my immediate <laughs> thought would be: Does this represent anything molecular-wise? Are we talking about a translational process, RNA into proteins? Um, or are we using the counting to start over? Because this has that where it wraps. Yeah. This has that zero right there. So does that mean they want you to count? This huge, huge oh, number, that humongous <laughs> number. That would be a, that would overflow on 32-bit machine for sure. You're right. Thank you guys you. are gonna need this. <laughs> oh boy. Dear God. Okay. Well, here we go. Oh. Okay. What did I say? Overflow on 32-bit. This is the called age it. of the universe. So I'm just gonna circle Actually, the ones we on. need. Okay. It's a lot of adding. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I don't know what Pass it Pass the baton to you. Using elements to explain DNA does make sense because protons don't change, and so you always wind up with the same element. So that actually makes sense that once you've established an elemental key, you can then use that key to design molecules. I think that makes sense. But time, I mean, my thought would be obviously, I think it's funny that we do a double helix structure. I don't think aliens would realize the picture of it unless they use the exact same um, visuals we do for a double helix structure. I immediately would think of number of nucleotides, or you have DNA Could phosphorus and how many of them there are. How many humans are on the Earth? Could Eight be billion. Number? Well, in nope. 1970. Oh, and yeah, back then when they sent it. It was 1974, so that was... Because the largest number that we're adding to is 107 million, right? Yeah, no. No, it's 1 billion. It's a billion. What is it, 2 to the 30th? So what comes to my it's mind would be billion. the number of DNA bases we have. So we'd be saying how complicated of an organism we are based on DNA, but the amount of DNA says nothing about complexity of an organism. So that doesn't work. I mean, not if... That'd be useless information. Please. Yeah. And honestly, in 74, we had we... really not known very much about what comes around DNA or protein structure and things like that. And we didn't even know our own genes. So I think it's unlikely that in 74, we'd be talking about how many genes humans have. So the number Sorry, is 4.3 billion. Oh, and the age of our planet. <laughs> it's not <laughs> the age of anything. You got it. You were totally right earlier. Just by randomly guessing numbers, that would work. This is the number of nucleotides in DNA, Why? which is something you said. Yeah. Now, when I say it's the number of <laughs> nucleotides in DNA, it's the number of nucleotides in DNA in 1974. Right, right. So which it's it not turns out now. is very wrong. Right. It was off by about 50%, at least to the number that we know now. Yeah. So that is what that number is. Keep going. Why Sorry to make you do all the calculations. aliens to know this? Okay, so here's what... So, like the thousandth issue I take with this thing <laughs> is they use characters, and let's just let's forgive that they are like change the way you count. These are glyphs, right? Here's how you count. Okay, now here's your chemical, your your yeah. elements, and then use that to do this. And all of a sudden, they're like, never mind. We're switching to pictures. Well, so I think that's totally stupid to say that this is DNA. I think if you're saying that this means nucleotides, then this number means how many nucleotides, which makes sense, except that's wrong and um, complexity of organism means nothing with nucleotides. So why you would tell something we have X amount of nucleotides, 
um, is pretty much arbitrary. I mean, potatoes have more chromosomes than humans do. Now we're down to okay. humans. Okay. We know that's a human. Just a person. Oh, okay. Are these also other images then with like a satellite or something? Like, so then no. I would count. I would still be stuck in this idea of counting, counting. right? Like if I say, Although, I would count up what all of these mean and try to rationalize what that is. And then I would be like, I don't know where this stops, so this might be a line, and then let's count this. And I still think this looks more like a creature than this does. Satellite, I don't know. I mean, if we get something <laughs> right, are you guys going to tell us? Yes. Okay. Okay. Satellite? <laughs> Human? <laughs> <laughs> However, this one actually is kind of leaping out at me. When I look this, at it upright. This one here. Yeah. 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 Sun, Earth, yeah. planets. Oh. Okay. And that Earth is raised up because it's like, of the, that's what of we the are, system, the that's yeah, where we are. are. The that is the solar the system. Mass. And nice. it is, again, just pictures. Not numbers, so. Oh, and how massive they, yeah. Right, so the giant cast size. giants. Okay, that makes sense. Man, we'd totally be counting that. Like zeros, you've got no planets, and then you've got one planet and no planet. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> this, <laughs> is, is this our Cebo dish? Oh, like how we oh. found them? That is the air Cebo dish. That is what that's supposed to represent. Oh, you know what it really the whole looks thing, like? Including the, what's the, the M thing? The Arecibo, the Arecibo dish is just the image of the dish. That is it. This At this point, one. you have to figure out basically just three things. Okay. What this all is supposed to mean. Including what this. is this? Those are two separate mm, things. Down here. And then what is this at the bottom? All right, let's sprint through the finish. You said satellite, and he didn't put a card down, <laughs> so that's not a satellite. <laughs> um. But we know now because of the stupid helix, and now that these are pictures and not numbers, this okay. is probably a picture of something. Yeah, so if we're going from DNA to humans, what would, what would we put on the same plane as humans? But I feel like there would be some information about like gender or something, but I, maybe not. Gender is confusing. Um, that's not <laughs> technically always considered. I mean, if we run across a race of amphibians, they wouldn't have gender. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, they might, but... Just from, I think they put on the plaque of, like, the golden plaque of, that they sent with the Voyager. They put a... You know, gender. You know, but, yeah. Which could also be confused with two different species, but... Yeah. Yeah, that would be my thought, is if you realize this was a picture of humans, I would recognize that there must be, th like, three major species on the planet. If you're saying this is where we are, I'd be like, you've got this freaky-looking thing. Um, no uh, head. Amoebas <laughs> and... Birds. <laughs> it's definitely not a flag. Is it a continent? Related to humans in 1974. Oh, this is 1974. What was going on? Numbers? Number of humans? Sounds like a really bad idea to get. Hey, actually, hold on. That's going to be... I think you might be right. So, just to screw you up even more, mm -hmm. these are numbers, and they're sideways. Three, um, yeah, I'm assuming this is probably, these? yeah, the number of... People. People, yeah. Yeah, so the last one was 4.3 billion that we added up. This goes past by, like, one, so it's going to be about, like, what is that, like, six billion? Six billion, yeah. so Probably. population. So it actually doesn't go end. a little bit beyond. It's almost identical to the other number of about 4.3 billion. But you guys were right. It age? is the world population as of 1974. Okay. You okay. mentioned it a few times. So yeah, it's about 4.3 billion. It just happens to be almost identical to the number of nucleotides they thought were in DNA. It's just a coincidence, but. Okay, so what else would it be? If, this, if we put population on one side, what would we put on the other? Number of Age nations? Age of our species? Age of our species, nations. So I think um, they actually might push the, the baseline down. I don't know if they can do that, because it's be zero, 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 zero. And they have one, or zero, one, so that's two, four, and eight. I don't know if that's right. And then you get a 14. Yeah, and then. And then three zeros. 14. So this is the number 14, and you're going to need your general information sheet again. Uh, to try and figure out what that number actually means. Uh, so 14 sounds closest to our known age of the universe, but that would be in years. In years. I didn't, there's not they really a fundamental time unless you put it in something. What about so they like said it was on the years? sheet. Yeah, what about years so distances? They could measure the. So we're 14 light years from something? It's, it's just a length. You just need to figure out what the length means. It doesn't matter what units they use, just what does that length represent. Right, like a person's height is roughly 1.764 meters. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That is the height of a human male, the average height of a human male in 1974. So now, Short. The, this, this doesn't make any sense, but no. the reason these extra, what you call zero bars are here, is they go from the bottom of the human 
to the top of the human. And so it's supposed to help you help indicate that this is the height of the person. Does that make any sense? No, not really. But knowing that, try and figure out what this last piece means. It's, is it the width of the dish? <laughs> <laughs> it does go, yeah, the width of the dish. Yeah. <laughs> it is the diameter of the Arecibo dish. It's about 300 meters. Why would they that? care? It's important to remember that this was a publicity stunt. This was done just to show the advancing technology of the telescope. It wasn't really to be read by aliens, which is important to keep in mind when you look at some of the decisions that were made. So what did you all think of that exercise? I mean, it, it was you know fun from a social aspect, but very frustrating from a science and computational standpoint. Extremely frustrating. We've come a long way I, since the 70s. <laughs> yeah. I feel like if you received this message and you interpreted it like this and you explained it to everybody, you would sound crazy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, it makes no sense. They change how they measure everything from section to section yeah. and how they do it, and it's not consistent anywhere. From my perspective, I mean, I mentioned this before, it's maddening that <laughs> they give you this and then say immediately after that, Never mind. Imagine the madness if tomorrow all Microsoft Word documents didn't work in Microsoft Word because Microsoft is like, well, we're going to change the format on you. And then the day after it was something different. So it's, it drives me nuts that they give you this primer and then they start showing you pictures like you're a child. And somewhere in here, I don't know, like it's like one person did all of this and then somebody else did this section. And yep. it's like they had it was like a yep. group project, <laughs> yeah. and somebody worked really hard on this one, and then they phoned this one in at the yeah. last minute. This is the guy who shows up on the day of the exam and is like, guys, Earth, that's it. Although if you don't figure out the 23 by 73, then... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you don't get to any of this. It's a non-starter. So. Like, what's your wrap-up thought on the message? Like, like yeah. just, just summarize your I thoughts on the message. Almost. I mean, I guess I'd say, like, it's a good thing that probably someone put something like this together just at least to make people think about it and yeah obviously it's not going to work so you should think about it more and I, I mean it's a good thing that it got it at least somewhat into people's minds I don't know if it really got it that much into people's minds but. I think probably the most infuriating thing for anyone trying to figure out things like this is just to stay consistent with just these little minor inconsistencies and wrapping the numbers and changing, like, oh, and now you're just going to be counting how many hydrogens, carbons, all that. It, I don't think anyone will be able to keep up with it. Overall, I think it's a good exercise. I mean, how many years it's been since they first sent it out to now where we are and re-looking at it and saying, okay, now that years have passed, you've kind of got a different generation of people looking at this message with what we know now. Is this even something functional we could use? And so I think it helps us build and grow. Definitely like a good, um, just overall idea to try. Frank Drake is really good at putting together things that are useful to think about, like this and the Drake equation, but that's all they're really useful for is to think about. I mean, no one's ever gonna actually see this, and it's probably a really good thing that no one's ever gonna see this. Who are you sending that to? Nadia Drake. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.